So today we're going to get into building out uh, candy logos in Adobe Illustrator. And we'll look at a couple basics of the Reese's logo, Snickers logo, and then playing just with a generic candy logo, but understanding how the stroke can be used and understanding the appearance panel a little bit better. To start out, we're going to start out with the Reese's logo and get into building this from scratch. We're going to go over to the left side navigation and we're going to click and drag to create out a text box in which I'm going to enter in Wild Ride, the Reese's font. You can find this off of defont.com. A couple of modifications I need to make to the tracking. We're going to set this back to zero for right now. And size, just so we can see it a lot better, I can select inside of the text itself. Use the wheel on my mouse to up the size of the text itself. And I'm just going to put it up to about 175 right now. And we can enter in Reese's. You'll notice that there are a couple slight differences from the actual Reese's logo versus what we're working with with the text. So a couple modifications that we're going to need to adjust overall. To start out, we're going to look to <coughs> first adjust our R. We can see that the R has a lower X height or lower baseline than the rest of the letters. So if we want to modify the specific R letter, we can experiment with the touch type tool. The touch type tool is located underneath of the type tool. If I go down to this, I can actually click on the letter of the R and get into scaling the size of the R or getting into placing the R in the location that I want. If you want to make sure that we're getting things aligned, I could use the ruler tool. If I want to get the rulers, I'm going to go up to view at the top navigation and down to rulers and show rulers. With this, I can click and drag from the measurement and place a horizontal line right underneath at the baseline of our lowercase letters. This will help me make sure that I'm getting a better alignment with my R and you can zoom in. You can see that the R is almost aligned but the E's and the S are not. So if I do want to modify this I can just simply move back over to my cursor Look to adjust my text down to the horizontal guideline I've put a place in. And again, I can see that I still need a modification on the R, so I'm going to select it again, adjust the location to get it better aligned. I can also take a look to make sure that I have the R touching, not leaving any open gaps with the E. And we'll notice that I also have to extend this E as well. I do want to have it touching like I do see in the logo itself. But if I want to double check and just make sure the R is lining up where I want. Again, I can click and drag it. But if I do want to modify the tracking or kerning in any way, I can always modify in the character panel. But for right now, we have the placement where I want. Now we want to get into modifying the R itself. We can still see that the R on my text is currently still below the baseline. So we are going to look to turn our text into outline so we can modify this a little bit better. With an E here, we're going to look to edit it, but it has to be placed into outlines or an object first. So with this selected, we're going to go up to type at the top navigation. And I can hit create outlines. Now we can see how our text is aligning together. So if I zoom in closer, I can hit command or control plus sign, zoom in. Again, like we see with the original E, the E's extend up into the other E. So we want to make sure that we're extending those that design in as well. So I'm going to zoom in. 
I'm going to click on my direct selection tool. The direct selection tool is the white arrow left side navigation. And for this E, I'm going to look to click and drag and bring my two anchor points of the E up to a line and overlap onto our next E. Based off of what I'm seeing with our image, you can see that the E does raise up pretty high, but still below the bottom of the upper part of the E. But we can see that's a lot closer to what it was with the design. It still flows well overall. Once we have that placement, any other modifications I may want to make, I can see that looking at the apostrophe over on our E, it's actually cut off on the original Reese's logo. You can see that it's not actually a point like we're seeing with the text. So if I did want to tweak or modify this in any way, a couple different methods we could use. We could use the knife tool to cut off a portion of this shape or race out elements. So if I wanted to click and drag through the part of the design that I didn't want, click and drag and then use the direct selection tool to select the area that I don't want, deleting it out from the design. If you want to get more precise, a couple different methods we can do, but I'm going to zoom in closer. If I want to take a look at the scissors, scissors work relatively the same way. I'm just going to look to click on anchor points or add in anchor points on the shape. I can use the pen tool to cut out the last anchor point. But many different options you can get into. More often than not, I'd like to be safe with it. I can always just add in anchor points on the ends or draw out a line. And with a line, I can get the curve that I'm looking for on the bottom of the object. And with this now drawn out, I'm going to select on the other object, or the apostrophe itself, and use the shape loader to cut off this bottom portion of the letter. Hold down Alt, click on it. Now we can cut that out from our design. Take off our stroke, and now we have the angle that I'm looking for for the apostrophe. Next, we want to get into modifying the bottom of the R. I'm going to zoom in closer to it, just so I can be a little bit more precise. Taking a look at the bottom of the R, I'm going to click on it with the direct selection tool. And I can see there's four anchor points that make up the bottom of the R. What I'm going to look to do is select each of these four anchor points. I can hold down shift to select on all four of them, making sure that we click on the little white anchor or the so that it turns blue. Then I'm going to click and drag to bring this up to the bottom of this guide. When aligning, we want to make sure that we're still maintaining control of what the shape looks like, that it looks smooth all around. We can see over on the left side here, this handle is a little bit too extended. That I need to kind of reshape the R without distorting or without changing the shape of what it's intended to look like. If there are additional areas that you feel like you need to smooth out, I can always go over to the smooth tool, look to click and drag on the object so we get a smoother line and you can see it etches this out, cleans it up so it looks like one smooth curved line without any interruptions. So again, just going over the shape, we're going to go along this line and it helps to smooth it out as if it was meant to look that way. So now we, that we have the text modified, now we want to get into adding in our <clears throat> strokes. A couple different ways that we can do the strokes. Everybody has their own method, what works for them. Today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use our appearance panel over on the right side navigation. With the appearance panel, currently there is no stroke on the object. But we can first look to change out the color of our text. I can use the eyedropper tool to match and get the correct yellow. And with the text selected, when I click on the sample from our Reese's logo, we match it precisely to what we're looking for. 
Once we have this now turned into that yellow, now we're going to look to add a stroke. With our appearance panel, I'm going to go down to add new stroke. And with add new stroke, I'm going to click on the sample of black. And now we can get into choosing out a brown color. We can see that the browns may not be exactly what we're looking for. But I'm going to adjust the thickness of the stroke. Understand that if your text is not outlined, the stroke is going to appear only or split in between the inside interior and the outside itself. So what we want to make sure of is that the text is able to be selected on the exterior of the text. So we're going to go to the stroke panel. And taking a look, we can see that our stroke is currently showing only on the split, having it divided, but we want to get be able to get the aligned stroke to the outside. So back over in our settings, If I do want to adjust this, I can look to place the stroke behind our fill. With the stroke, I'm going to place it underneath of our fill, which is our contents. So it's not a matter of just seeing our stroke. Our stroke is actually sitting behind our contents, which if I double click inside of it, can show the yellow fill that we have. We can always adjust our stroke on the inside as well, but that is just based off the group that we had selected from earlier. So with our text, right now my stroke is a little bit thin. I might want to thicken it up, make it stronger, try matching better to what we're seeing with our example here. And overall, it's starting to match pretty well. Might go a little bit thicker, modify the stroke. Next, we're going to add in our orange stroke. With our orange stroke, we're actually going to add a second stroke. So we can add another stroke. And this stroke, we're going to change out to orange. If the orange isn't precise, I can always use the eyedropper tool, hold down shift. Let me go back into my Make sure the text is selected. So again, we're seeing the eight point stroke. With this bottom stroke, we're gonna change it out to an orange color, but we're going to again up the stroke thickness. So it is filling out the overall area and we can see now it is matching better to what the Reese's logo does look like. If we wanna darken it up or choose a darker orange, we can see how it looks or modify the stroke color. trying to find an overall better match to our Reese's logo but you can see that it does ultimately re resemble the original design so once we have that replicated out now we can get into creating out the Snickers logo with the Snickers logo there is a little bit of complexity with having these little white strokes on the interior we don't have to necessarily get too into that too involved with this detail, but just understanding how to modify the text and maybe add in the red border, and we'll take a look at possibly adding in those white strokes in a little bit. But to begin with, we're going to create out another text box. 
I can go over the type tool, click and drag to create out a horizontal text box, and I'm going to type in Snickers, and we want to place it into the Snickers font. Going up to the top navigation, if I start typing in, I've already installed the font. And the font may be too large for our text box, so we can always scale it out. And I can reduce the size of our font. Take a look at my character panel. If I don't see it, I go up to window and then uh, down to type and character. With the character panel right now, my size of the text is just too large. Overall, we want to get the text fitting back into the text box. <clears throat> Again, we can use the eyedropper tool with the text selected to match better to the Snickers colors. And if I do need to make any type of modification tweaking the spacing between text, we can either select the whole thing and modify our tracking. The tracking is this VA highlighted, which if I hit the down arrow, I can adjust closer to the text. Or if I hit the up arrow, spreading them out. This is often better than using the kerning tool. The kerning tool is limited based on individual letters. It won't let you do it if you have multiple letters, but if I select on one, I can modify So the tracking is a lot more convenient overall for these letters. You may notice a couple differences from the Snickers original text than the text that we're currently working with. We may have to make a modification to this K. You can see that it does have the sharp right side. Having these diagonals extending out. So if we do want to modify this, we are going to have to turn this into type. I'm going to go over to type and create outlines. First, I can look to break out from the original K or the K that we're using. I'm going to use the top portion of the K. Click on the anchor points to adjust the extension. I can hold down shift to make sure it's extending only horizontally so it has more width to the design. Down the bottom, it does, we don't want to be dealing with these curves, so I can use the direct selection tool to select over the anchor points I don't want. Or, I may want to consider just using the pen tool and subtracting the anchor points that are creating this curve shape. I want to have a more direct curve, or line off the K. So I'm looking to take out these curved shapes. Then I can get into tweaking certain aspects of this K. And what I'm doing is just using the anchor point tool and it cuts off any of these little curves and just gives me the straight edge for our K shape. Again, I'm holding down shift as I slide over individual anchor points so I can get it on the right angle. So now we're getting a little bit closer to what the K should look like. If you feel like letters need to be adjusted, you can individually select out layers, holding, uh, clicking on the direct selection tool, modifying out the tracking by hand. But it's usually often easier to modify the tracking but prior to to make sure that we're getting accuracy on our on our letters. So I'm selecting all the letters individually and then sliding together as a group so they are a little bit more tight knit. Next, we can get into adding in the border. With the border, I am just going to draw out a rectangle shape. 
first, just over top of our text. And I'm going to change it out to white with a red stroke, matching similarly to what we have with the actual Sinker's logo. And I'm going to move this backward, Command or Control, left bracket. Looking at the shape, though, we want to match better to the angle of the letter italicize. So I'm going to go over to first the direct selection tool, which I can click on an anchor point, nudge out anchor points individually to try matching the angle. Or we can go over to our free transform tool. For the free transform tool, out of the first option, I can click and drag on an anchor point, and you can see that I am just adjusting this off to the side to the, get the correct angle matching to our shape. We want to make sure that we're tweaking this. Again, take your time just to make sure that the lines are lining up correctly. But I'm holding shift to make sure that it shifts over. If I do need to modify individual anchors, I can select on an anchor point, hold down shift if I do want to get two, and I can click and drag this inward to our shape. Again, it's not exact, so what I'm going to look to do is individually select specifically on one, just so we're getting matching the angle of our snicker. So we want to make sure that we're maintaining width or space around the outside of the text. But if we take a look at the top left and the bottom right, the corners are rounded. If I do want to modify an individual corner, I'm going to click on that specific anchor point, and we see the little circle appearing on the inside. I can click and drag to create out the roundness for that shape. Same thing with the top left. Make sure that with the direct selection tool, we're clicking on this little circle to adjust the shape to our text. For the stroke on the outside, we can just look to adjust the stroke weight over in my stroke panel, and I'm going to align the stroke to the outside. Choosing on the align stroke, align stroke to the outside, and adjust the weight so we get that thickness. And we can see that we are matching very well, or pretty close to what the original Snickers logo is supposed to look like. Any additional adjustments, if you decide to get into trying to modify or create out this white little highlight, I'm actually going to create a duplicate of this text. With this text, I can hit Command or Control C, Command or Control V. I'm going to make a copy of this, Command or Control C, Command or Control F, placing one directly on top of that design. Now that I have a copy sitting directly on top of, just so we can see the difference, I am going to change the color out. So on my foreground color, I'll make this red for a moment, and I'm going to shift this a little bit to the right. Just giving me a little bit of overlap between those two letters. With this, we're going to look to select out both of the text. And we can either go over to our Pathfinder tool, and go to Window, Pathfinder. I'm going to look to do the minus front. With minus front, it will cut out anything that the front of the text is showing. But understand that that's, it's just leaving the S portion for our outlines. It doesn't match to everything. So what you may find out easier is getting into using the Shape Builder. With the Shape Builder tool, we can hold down Alt. With the minus symbol, I can click and drag over the areas I want to cut out, leaving us just these blue strokes. So 
So I'm cutting any of the overlap as well as the right side red. But it will leave the blue that we left on the left edge. If I mess up, I can always hit Command or Control Z to undo. Once I have this, I'm going to group this for a moment, hit Control G, and I'm going to then change this foreground color out to white. With this white edge, I'm going to look to place and lower it onto our text, but you may notice that the shapes are, being the same size, run all the way top to bottom edges. If we wanted to get into scaling this a little bit, I can hold down Shift to adjust. Just understand that because we are scaling them down a little bit, making them smaller, we are going to have to modify the placement on certain objects. So if I wanted to get into modifying individual letters, I'm going to ungroup this and we can tweak these shapes to fit better individually. So it makes them take a lot of tweaking. So I'm going to go individually into isolations modes or we can look to ungroup the elements that make up each letter. So if I wanted to modify all these individual pieces, I can click and drag them first onto the placement where I want to work with them. A couple of letters work a lot easier than others, being the I, being the E while others are a little bit more complicated because they have multiple pieces to deal with. So with isolation mode, I can get into adjusting specific points to where I want. Or if I have to zoom in, get close, I can look to adjust Specific anchor points, I can see down the bottom of this S, I do want to extend this down so it does not overlap, but it do, will sit better to where I'm trying to fit it onto this shape. Now we'll get into doing the R, and go into isolation mode, double clicking with the selection tool. Though the bottom works, the top does not, so I want to select these individual corners, anchor points, and adjusting them to fit better to the design. So it can be a lot of tedious work, but it's a matter of doing your best to replicate and create out a strong overall shape. If I am in isolation mode, use the regular selection tool to select out an individual piece. Then you can get into tweaking the placement to where you need. For the K shape, if I take a look at the original K, these lines do extend further up. So I'm going to zoom in closer. Though the bottom of the K does align, I do, do want to get these anchor points extending all the way up to the edge. So it can be tedious, but again, just take your time. Will ultimately look good if you put in the effort. The end is like the K. Again, it just has to be extended down so it's lining up to the bottom and matching to the cutouts.
Finally, the S, again, just click inside with the direct selection tool. Modify the placement as needed. So it's not necessarily perfect, but we're just going through the best method or the quickest method of going through the process. There are, again, a number of different ways of doing it, but we're just trying to give you an overview of how to modify or recreate these type of logos. Next, we're going to take a look at this candy logo at the bottom with the candy logo. We're going to look to adjust and modify the stroke. With the stroke, we're going to first start to create out a text box for the word candy. And the candy is going to be in this Kronos font, or Planet Kronos, or Cosmos, excuse me. With the candy text, I'm just going to reduce it down slightly, just so it fits a little bit more space. But what we're particularly looking at today is creating out this gradient effect. I've already created out a gradient that goes from cyan to magenta. To create out this effect and replicate what we're seeing here, we're going to go over to our appearance panel. In our appearance panel, I can double click inside of the contents so that I can see our stroke and can see our fill. Right now our stroke is currently sitting outside of our fill and there is no actual uh, stroke on it. But if I click on the stroke, I can click on our gradient that, and we see that we have black text with this gradient sitting on the outside. I'm going to adjust the stroke upward just so it can stand out. But understand, if I'm looking at this method, our stroke is staying black. The reason being is that because it's still part of the actual character itself, it's not showing us what the content sh should actually look like. So if I wanted to fix this, what we're going to look to do is undo the stroke that's in the character setting. I'm going to put this back down to zero. And we're going to get out of the character se setting with the text box selected, we're actually going to just add a stroke down on the bottom left. Adding a stroke on the bottom left, it's actually creating out a stroke that's outside of the character itself. So it just saves the ability to be able to still edit. But what we're going to look to do, again, click on the drop down of where the stroke is, pick out the gradient that you want. And now you can see that the gradient is actually transitioning on the text. I'm going to up the size of the stroke. But currently with our stroke, say, at 6, the stroke is appearing right on the text. We want to create some space for this. To modify the placement of this stroke, we're going to go down to FX at the bottom of our appearance panel. We're going to go to Offset Path or path and offset path. With offset path, it's going to adjust our offset so it's extend, expanding further away from the text itself. If I do want to adjust the numbers, you can use the wheel on the mouse to adjust, to adjust it further or keep it relatively close. I'm going to keep it on 0.125. Then I'm going to click OK and we're going to change our FX again go down to Pathfinder and we're going to click Add. Adding this Pathfinder, it combines those pieces into one single outline. And it's actually extending from the text. If I were to bring this text down, you can see that's creating transparency between the text itself from the text to the stroke. So there's that gap where you can do different things, where you can look to place in different colors, you can do many things to create some more interest overall. We can always go back to look to make some tweaks to our text. If I wanted to do a relative comparison, I may notice that this orange on the Reese's stroke 
might be a little bit too thick. So I'm going to take a look at my <coughs> text. I'm going to select on the text. If I do want to bring up the appearance panel, maybe I want to reduce down the size of my orange stroke. Or if I select on the text, I can get into modifying or reducing down the size of my brown stroke. But we can see it is a little bit heavier. Just a matter of figuring out what's going to best resemble the shape that we originally started with. But once we have these three logos created out, we are all done. I hope you enjoyed how to modify text and create out these logos. And hopefully I'll see you next time.